Support for Criminal comes from Best Fiends. Best Fiends is a mobile puzzle game that anyone can download and play. Whether you have a few minutes or a few hours, Best Fiends is the perfect puzzle game to get lost in. There are tons of characters that help you solve thousands of puzzles. And they're always adding new characters and challenges. Download Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. Support for Criminal comes from Shopify. Shopify is the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify provides the tools and resources to succeed no matter the size of your business, instantly letting you accept all major payment methods. Visit shopify.com slash criminal for a free 14-day trial and full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash criminal right now. Shopify.com slash criminal. Today's episode is not okay for younger listeners, and it could be upsetting to victims of sexual abuse, so please use discretion. Every time they, someone sees his face, he, they say, he's Tommy Wall, that's the boy they arrested. Even though they, they may know or they may not know, he can never live it down. You just don't have a charge of pedophilia and, and outlive it. You just can't outlive that. This is Mary. She's asked us not to use her real name. Her ex-son-in-law, Tommy Wall, was arrested as part of an investigation into a child pornography and sex ring. Four people had already been arrested, three men and a woman. The ring was conducted under the guise of a daycare center in Sanford, North Carolina. It's a horrible story, something none of us ever want to even have to think about, much less have our name associated with. As Mary says, you just can't outlive that. I'm Phoebe Judge. This is Criminal. Harnett County investigators need your help to find a suspect in a child pornography investigation. They say the man may be in Raleigh or the Fayetteville area. Ariel Clay is live in Lillington. And Ariel, you just spoke with the lead investigator. What did he tell you? Well, Gerald, Detective Brad Bird says that this unidentified man who he's looking for is part of the biggest sex crimes case that he has ever worked. Uh, the, the ring was run by a man named Bailey Joe Mills. Mills presented himself as a babysitter and mentor, but actually was producing child pornography in the building behind his house, with victims ranging in age from 1 to 14. Mills was caught after he contacted a 13-year-old on Facebook about paying her for sex, and the girl's mother called the police. This was a big news story across North Carolina in June 2014. Four people had been caught, but the police were still looking for the fifth man. That's when Mary saw her former son-in-law on TV. I was sitting here in my <clears throat> reclining chair in my living room, and the news came on. And I was not paying real close attention to the television at that time, but when it came on the second time, I paid attention. I said, that's Tommy Wall. And... It was just, it was just nauseating. It was just absolutely nauseating. And so I was basically sitting at my kitchen table working. And uh, I get a text from my location manager at the store, Kim West. And she said, um, you look like the dude on TV. I said, what? Tommy Wall is 50 years old, a divorced father of two, tall, white, thin hair, He's sitting in what seems like a brand new house in Four Oaks, North Carolina. It's so clean and new, it looks like one of those show houses they put together for new subdivisions. He has two pictures of his kids in frames. That's about it. Back in June, he'd been working for a construction supply company, the same one he'd worked for for 23 years when he got the text from his boss. She said, you were on the news tonight. I said, no way. So she sent me, because I don't watch the news, so I didn't know. And this was like 7-something, seven, 7 o'clock. So she sent me a link, and there was four people in the picture, and I, was, I, was, I texted her back. I said, I don't look like none of them. You know, it was a girl, a guy, and, or three guys and a girl. And I said, like, I don't look like them. She said, scroll down. So I scrolled on my phone, and I was like, wow, that is me. And there was a little number, a phone number, under my picture. I didn't read any of the article. I just hit that button and was going to copy the number. Well, it dialed the phone number, and the man answered the phone. And I says, you know, I said, who is this? He said, who are you looking? I said, whoever's putting my pictures on the website. I said, I want to know what's going on. He had called the detective who was in charge of the case, Brad Bird. 
And he says, well, who is this? And I told him my name. He says, well, where do you live? I told him where I live. I says, I need to come down. We need to straighten this out right now. I said, this is, something's going on, and I don't know what it is. And I said, I want to get to the bottom of it. And the detective was like, well, we don't open till 8 tomorrow. Can you come at 8.30? I said, 8.30 tomorrow? I mean, you know, I'm thinking, I want to do this right now. Tommy was trying to get himself off the TV, but what he had essentially done is handed them his own name on a plate. We just received word within the last 10 minutes that police have identified who this suspect is. They have identified him as Tommy Wall, and he is not in custody, but they do know who he is. They're still looking for him right now. Now, they released this picture of uh, the suspect. The next morning, Tommy went to the sheriff's office right before 8.30, as promised. I get there, and uh, they call the detective, and we go back in the interrogating room and for questioning. And he has a picture there, and he shows me this picture, and he says, do you recognize this picture? And I said, nope. What is it? It was a picture of the building behind the home of Bailey Joe Mills, the leader of the pornography ring. And uh, he said, I just need to go and tell you I'm going to arrest you. And uh so he read me my rights, and my phone was still gone. And uh, he's reading and all this, and I looked at him. I said, dude, do you really think I've done this? And he looked at me with this sarcasm look. He says, yeah, I've got you on video. It's true Tommy was on video. Here's what happened. In 2011, Tommy had been online dating. One woman he met was the wife of Bailey Joe Mills. Her name is Elizabeth. Tommy went to the Mills' home to visit her. He says he stayed for an hour, he says they fooled around a bit, and then he left. The only time he ever saw her, he says. But Bailey Jo Mills appears to have had a camera rolling in the house. We're not really sure why, maybe for security, who knows. But it caught Tommy's visit, and the video was saved along with a whole trove of other materials, apparently including the child pornography at the center of the case. So, he was on video from that visit three years earlier. The problem for Tommy was that the police were saying he was on other videos too, pornographic videos. His bail was set at $1 million. I went to a holding cell and I spent there, spent the day there and spent the night and the next morning I got up and they took me to court. That's when I went for my first court appearance and then in front of the judge, the, the DA read all the charges, and then the judge looked at me, and she says, you know, you've asked for a court and point of lawyer and everything. I said, yes, Your Honor. And she says, you know, that these charges carry uh, life in prison without parole. And I was like, what, Whoa. what? What are the charges? Um, what are you hearing the, the judge read? The, you know, assisting rape and um, child molestation and then, you know, solicitation of sex with minors, Officially, the charges were first-degree rape of a child, first-degree sex offense against a child, and felony conspiracy. You know, they're saying all these charges, and I'm just, like, shaking my head. I'm like, I don't, this is, something ain't right. Investigators are releasing little about Wall's involvement, only saying he performed a sex act with a child on film. Yeah, I've got a two-year-old daughter. You know, we play out in the yard, and to think there's somebody like that, you know, living next door to you. Tommy and I have always had a good relationship and and when all of this happened everybody in the neighborhood thought Tommy was guilty so I just never thought that this is Mary again Tommy's ex-mother-in-law Mary is 80 years old and she along with Tommy's best friend growing up Tim were basically the only people who helped once Tommy was arrested you, so are, you, can, are you saying your, even your neighbors, those people that you considered your friends, thought he was guilty? Yes. What was that like? Well, it was not easy, especially when you go to church and people are asking you, you know, questions about such a sensitive matter. It was not, it was not easy. Two days after seeing his picture online, Tommy was sent to the Harnett County Jail to await trial. He was terrified. He did whatever he could to stay close to the guards. And I'm sitting there at the TV, and the first thing I do, I'm sitting there, you know, I try to stay the very first seat closest to the CO in case something was to go, you know, I had protection. And I heard this guy behind me, he's like, that's the dude, that's the dude that was on TV last night. More than a month passed. 
Tommy cycled through some public defenders, eventually ending up with a court-appointed private attorney named Fred Webb. The first thing Webb did was go visit Tommy in jail. He was humped over. Uh, his appearance was that of, of disbelief, and not in such a way as that, well, I just didn't, I just didn't do it. No, they got the wrong guy. That appearance to me meant, meant a lot to me. Webb sat down with the files from the case, and he says he found some inconsistencies. First off, the alleged fifth man in the ring, the man the police thought was Tommy, supposedly changed his cell phone number every 90 days. I thought that was something that could easily be tracked, if that was true. And I did track that, and I tracked that and determined that Mr. Wall had had the same telephone number for over 12 years. There was also the fact that Tommy Wall didn't have internet access at his home. He says he never had. He didn't even have a computer. And you would assume that people who get involved in that kind of activity would at least have a desktop or something in their residence whereby they could communicate with people, that they would at least have an internet connection at home. And he didn't even have that. So what do you think when you're sitting there, you're going through these 80 pages, you're finding one thing after another after another, what are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking that they've got the wrong guy. And, and if there were videos that showed him, we, I, I want to see the videos. Life in jail was hard for Tommy. He says he spent a lot of time alone in his cell, reading the Bible. Then one day he was served a search warrant. And he says, this, this is the search warrant. This is what we're going to do. we got to take photographs of you and your body, you know, um, without your clothes on. I'm like, excuse me? Does my lawyer need to be here? Oh, no, he'll get a copy of the, the photos. And I was like, you know, you got two men standing there with pistols on. You know, what do you do? You, you know, there's two of them, one of me, you know, I guess I got to take my clothes off. So you're standing there naked in the room, and they're saying, turn left, turn right. Hold your foot up, hold your hands, to take in my head, and, you know, all my private parts. I mean, this, this man taking pictures of me. The first thing that popped in my mind is uh, someone was going to try to do, take these pictures and do something to incriminate me because there was just the three of us in there. The whole time I was thinking, I can't trust what's going on. A second month passed, then a third. Fred Webb kept working on Tommy's defense strategy, and he was finally able to watch the video that allegedly placed Tommy at the center of the ring. And, uh, you know, I, I spoke with Tommy about this, and he says that he has not seen the video? No, he has not, and he cannot. Um, can you describe what's on that video? No, because of federal laws regulating regulating um, the behavior. Is it fair to say that this is behavior that would absolutely fall into the label of child pornography? Yes. And when you saw it, did you know now for certain that Tommy Wall wasn't the right guy? To me, yes. According to Fred Webb, there were some physical things that made it clear. But mainly he says it was the voice. It just didn't sound like Tommy. Did the district attorney say anything? Was there any comment in the room? His comment was that he did not want to keep a man incarcerated for something that he didn't do. And at, and at that point, did Detective Bird say anything? Did he apologize? Did he say, I think I've made a mistake here? No. I spoke with Detective Bird and asked him about Tommy Wall. He said he couldn't comment on ongoing investigations. When do you find out that you're going to be set free? I was just, you know, laying in the bed reading, and um, they said, Tommy, you got an attorney visit. So I get up, and I walk out, and as I go, to, getting ready to go through the doors, Fred meets me in the hallway. Well, he doesn't have his notebook and all this, and I'm like, oh, God. He was teary-eyed. So we kind of go into our little little room where the table's at. We didn't even sit down. He says, go home. He said, uh... I don't want to hear from you for a couple of weeks. Just uh, go home and get your life together. Uh, be with your family. He said, uh, and I'll be getting back with you. <laughs> so we had just come out of the room. All the people were in the room, and everybody was standing there, you know, looking at, you know, what's going on, what's going on with Tommy. So I turned around and walked out the door. <laughs> 
and I come through, so I'm going home, and it was like I had just won a tournament, and they were cheering, crying, and I, I went and started packing up my stuff. That's when I go back and they give me my clothes. The same clothes that you had put on three months ago thinking it was... Shorts and t-shirt and flip-flops. Oh, because it was like summer. Yeah. I weighed 189 pounds the day I was arrested. And right before I left, I got Holly, which was one of the nurses. I said, I'm going home. Can you weigh me? I weighed 151 pounds. It had been 105 days. What was it like when you finally heard that that Tommy, even though you had believed from the beginning that this was all nonsense, that of course he couldn't have, but, but when you heard he isn't, he isn't guilty, he was never guilty, this was a I mistake. I broke down and cried. It, I was so overjoyed when I heard that they had admitted they arrested the wrong person. It, I was just completely overjoyed. Because it was so grossly unfair to him, he can never live it down. In the months that Tommy had been in prison, he had lost his house. There was some issue with him missing a loan repayment meeting and the house was auctioned. He'd also lost his job, the one he'd had for 23 years. After his name was cleared, he tried to go back to the company and talk with a woman from HR. And basically she said, you know, we're not doing it. We've changed the way things are run. We don't have anything for you right now, and um, you know, I just want to wish you well with your career. And I says, do what? She says, I just, you know, good luck with your career. And I said, okay, that's all I needed to hear. We called his employer, Stock Building Supply, and they said they don't comment on legal or personnel matters. A lot of news outlets ran stories about Tommy. The news clips you've been hearing are from WRAL, a local TV station. Tommy was interviewed for a follow-up story after he got out, and an editorial note has been added to each of the old stories, saying Tommy was cleared of all charges and his record expunged. But his name and picture are still there. WRAL told us they didn't have anything to add to their coverage. As for the actual fifth man, the guy Tommy was mistaken for, police haven't released any information. We know that there are at least ten victims, and that police recovered tens of thousands of pornographic images. Tommy hasn't lost sight of that. It's sickening that you could basically hurt kids. You know, you know, to me, anybody that hurts a kid should be punished. When we talked to him, he'd been out of jail for less than two months. He says he sometimes has trouble leaving the house. He'll drive down the street and turn right back around. Even if he's scared to go out, people have started reaching out to him. He actually got a text message while we were sitting there, saying, congratulations, thinking of you. Then he showed us one from the night before. Can you read it? It said, well, what it was, it says, hey, buddy, wishing you uh, best, uh, best Merry freaking Christmas. And then... She goes to say, um, I have thought about you for months, and I hope you are doing well. I really, truly hope your holidays are special for 2015. And uh, God bless you. Keep your head up. Love you. Hope to see you soon. Maybe by next Christmas, the same text message won't carry so much weight. Criminal is produced by Eric Menel, Lauren Spohr, and me. Our episode art is by Julianne Alexander. You can find out more about this show and our previous episodes at thisiscriminal.com or on Facebook and Twitter at Criminal Show. We're putting on a live show on January 21st at Motorco Music Hall here in Durham, North Carolina. We'd love to see you if you're around. Criminal is a proud member of Radiotopia from PRX. Check out the other shows at radiotopia.fm. If you're interested in supporting this and other podcasts like it, email sponsor at prx.org. 
Radiotopia from PRX is made possible with support from the Knight Foundation and MailChimp, who celebrate creativity, chaos, and teamwork. I'm Phoebe Judge. This is Criminal. Radiotopia. Thanks to Truebill for their support. It's likely you're still paying for a subscription you no longer use, and maybe you've thought about canceling it, but haven't gotten around to it yet. Let Truebill do the canceling for you and put that money back into your pockets. From forgotten subscriptions to the ones you just don't need anymore, Truebill is a new app that helps you catch and cancel them all with just one tap. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash criminal. Go to Truebill.com slash criminal. It could save you thousands a year. Thanks to BetterHelp Online Therapy. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's affordable, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. Listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash criminal. That's BetterHelp.com slash criminal.